talked about Catlea Eldorado, which is a completely different environment from what you saw yesterday. Uh, we have a friend in, in Manaus, which, which is the capital of Amazonas state, far north in Brazil. And uh, this guy kept inviting us to go there for a long time, maybe more than 10 years. And uh, about four years ago, we decided to go. My father and I took a plane in, and arrived in Manaus. And uh, the feeling you get after you get out of the plane is like coming out, going out here. Hot and steaming, uh, very, very humid, very uncomfortable. And this guy had a, he rented a Volkswagen, it's like a camper, like the one that looks like a box the surfers used to. And the, the, that thing didn't have any uh, windows that, that opened on the back. And uh, when he, we entered the car, he, he was like, oh, today is very nice. We have cool, cool weather today. It's, it, it was like an oven inside. And we stayed for five days. It was a generic trip. We saw Acacalis, Siania. We saw Eldorado. We saw Violacea and uh, some other local species. And we told him, oh, it's going to be very difficult to come back again here. And then we went back for four more times after this trip. It's a very nice place. But then we did specific trips to see Violacea and Eldorado. So Eldorado uh, has a very restricted area of occurrence. It's not like Violacea. Violacea grows all over the Amazon basin. Eldorado only around Manaus. It's within a 155 five miles radius around the city of Manaus. You only find Eldorado there and anywhere else. And the vegetation that they like, it's called Campinas. Campina. You are going to see later, Campina is a, is a particular area where the trees are smaller and they are more scattered, so they get more light and a lot of humidity. And they are always at low altitudes, uh, around 300, 300 to 500 uh, feet high. So they get warm weather, weather. So as you can see, Manaus, it's in the middle, practically in the middle of the Amazon region. Uh, I live here in Vitoria, which is north of Rio, see Vitoria. And there is no non-stop flight to Manaus. So we have to go to Brasilia, which is the capital, and then fly to Manaus. If we could fly directly, this would be a four-hour flight. So it's almost like going from here to San Diego, for example. So it's very far. And it's a completely different part of the country. So they, they live, it's another Brazil, OK? So we, this is Manaus, and here you see the Black River, Rio Negro, and here is the Solimões River. The, so it's blue here because of the satellite photo, but this river actually has brown water, and this one has black water because Negro, Negro means black. And they meet right in front of Manaus. And, the, and then it's officially the Amazon River. This is the main river that forms the Amazon, but only when it meets with the Negro River, it's actually the Amazon River. And this river has black water, warmer water, and slower cur current. The Solimões has faster water, faster current, uh, brown water, they call it locally white water, and it's cooler, the water is much cooler. So they don't mix for about six miles or even more. They, grow, they go together, one on the side of the other, so, but the waters don't mix. They, they will mix only about six miles from, where, from this meeting point. It's very interesting. So you think the Amazon region, everything is the same, but it's not. So, the vegetation in this side of the river may actually be different from the vegetation on the other side. 
So if you want to go fishing in the Amazon, you go up the Solimões River. If you want to go and see orchids, you have to go up the Negro River. You don't see any Eldorado around here, and you don't catch any fish here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> And so that, that you have an idea, this is, a, the, this is the Anavillanas Archipelago. It has more than 400 islands inside the river. And the river width is about 12.5 miles just in here, okay? It's a lot of water. It's amazing. This is where the water meets. See, the black water and the, yeah, it's very distinct. And uh, you can ride a boat, small boat. If you close your eyes and put your hand inside the water, you can feel when the water turns from warmer to cooler right away. It's very easy. It's very easy. Huh? No, 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 no. <laughs> Actually, it's easier to get hit by a boat here than to be eaten by piranhas. <laughs> The traffic, they, uh, there are ships going on this river. And uh, la this year, we, our boat almost got turned over because a big ship was cruising at full speed and big waves, big waves. So before we go into the habitat, so you can understand how the climate is in the Amazon, you can see that this is a temperature graph on, for Manaus during one year, you can see that the average temper temperature is between 80 and 90 degrees all year long. There is not a lot of variation, see? The minimum, it's 74, and then comes minimum, minimum 70, and then goes to 80 something. And the maximum is around, bit, a little bit under 100 degrees. So it's warm, day and night almost, and during all year long. There is no temperature, not a lot of temperature vari variation. But when we talk about rainfall, then the things change a little bit. Uh, during January until May, we have a lot of rainfall, and from June, July is a little bit drier season, and then October, November, the rainfall starts to, to raise again. So everything there is ruled by the rainy season and the dry season. So for them, winter is rainy season. Summer is drier season. And uh, they say that in summer it rains every day, and in winter it rains every day, all day long. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And it's always hot. <laughs> and uh, even in summer, you, you can't see a lot if you are near the forest. But if you go on the river mar by the river margin and you can see farther away on the, on the afternoon, you see thunderstorm. One here, one there, even in the summer. So although it's dry, there is always rain, some rain going around. And the humidity is very high because the, the forest floor, the evaporation is high all the time. So this is a good tip for you who will try to grow violacea and Eldorado. Heat and humidity all year long. This is the difference between the drier season and the, the wet season. You can see here, this building here, the same building here. So this is in December when the Eldorado bloom, and this is in June when the Cattleya violacea bloom, bloom. They bloom six months apart of each other. Same thing, the same building here. You can see that the, the houses, the, the wooden houses of this, it's like a shanty town. It's all over wooden poles, and now, here they are almost at water level. So the Eldorado, they start blooming in December or in the beginning of the rainy season. 
Sometimes they get a little bit earlier, sometimes they get a bit late. Usually mid-December, early in January. And since uh, where we live, we don't have this very specific type of weather, and also here, uh, they tend to be a little, the plants tend to be a little crazy when they get out of the, their habitat or the, re the region where they live. So we, we may have uh, Eldorado blooming almost all, all year long. We can have plants blooming uh, differently, but the main season is autumn in Brazil. Okay, well, autumn everywhere, which is in May and June in Brazil. Can you hear me well? Yes. Okay. And uh, I was telling you about the, the vegetation. The, this is a typical Campina. Campina is an area where the sand is actually white sand. The soil is actually white sand. So it's a poor soil. And the trees are lower and more scattered. But you, you get a lot of humidity. So the, the Campina is the, 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 the place where the vegetation is low size. Then there is the Campinarana, which have a little higher trees, and then it turns to the regular, normal Amazon forest, which has big trees. The Eldorado, they live mostly in the Campina, but also in the Campinarana. They, you don't find Eldorado in the regular forest, dense forest. So as you can see, this area, people dig, it, dig uh, this area for sand. So uh, three, three years ago, it would take about four, three to four hours to cross the Amazon River in a barge. You would park your car and wait in a long line and get a, enter in a big bar, ferry, ferry, a ferry boat, and then cross the river. And two years from now, they uh, built a new br bridge, a big bridge. So now it takes 10 minutes to cross the river. So these areas where the El Dorado are, people are going more there. People are going there and, and they buy small land for the weekends. So when they start building new roads, you can see the narrow dirt road here, but the Brazil, Brazilians plan ahead in time. So they already opened for a big highway, freeway. See, they open a big area. So this is like a fish, fish bone. And they, they, they start cutting the forest around the roads mm. as people go and move there. Yeah, they all, uh, yeah. And they, they also, no, what? There was, it's not on, there was a problem with that one. I don't know. There's a little red dot on it. No. No, no, it's ah, okay. Yeah, got it. Okay. So uh, the opening of the of new roads and also sand extraction for construction. People cutting wood illegally. You can see truck markings uh, on, on some roads, and also illegal plant collecting. They are helping to decrease. I don't know until when these plants will be there. Fortunately, it's a, it's a rather large area, and, and I think they will. I think they will be still be around for a long time. So this is a typical view of the Campina. You see the, the sand, and you see a lot of lichens, and you see that the vegetation is not very dense. See another view? This is typical, typical vegetation of the Campina. And this is also Campina, a little higher, and the trees are full, full covered with moss. And fully covered with orchids. Oh, oh something is happening here. Yeah, OK. And the. Uh, and, and now you see the, the Eldorado. Uh, they don't grow high up on the trees. They grow at mostly like uh, 
12, 15 feet of the ground. And some plants are really, are, are growing on the, on the floor of the forest. The favorite tree oh my, is the makuku. It's called makuku. The name is Audina heterophylla. And uh, this, these trees, they, they can get thick, and they, the plants prefer those type of, type of trees. And you can see the humidity, a lot of lichens going on, growing on the leaves of the plants. They don't get a lot of light in most cases, although I saw plants growing in almost full sun. But most of the plants are in scattered light inside the forest. See how the place is wet. See, it's all wet here. They get a lot of humidity, a lot. And uh, the forest uh, is so humid that everything decays on a very fast rate. So you see a lot of branches on the ground. And, and it, as you can see, the plant is already falling here. So there is a, lo a lot of activity from fungus and bacteria on this place. It's exceptionally humid. Some plants are near the ground on, on thinner trees. And this is my father. See, the plant is almost on the ground, on an opening. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy, easy to see them. We have to carry all our stuff in, in plastic bag, and we got a heavy rain. We were literally soaked. So the cameras and everything, we have to carry plastic bags to, 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 carry, to put them inside. Most of the plants have light colors. You don't see darker colors, El Dorado. It's extremely rare. The concolor variety is rather common, and also alba. But the great majority has lighter tones of pink. Uh, most of the plants were also eaten by insects. And, and the, the El Dorado, the consistency, I don't know if you say or texture, they have very thin petals and sepals. The flowers, they don't last for long in habitat because of the insects and because of the rain. The rain, you can, you can get like three, four hours of very heavy rain. And so I think the flowers last less than a week. So there must be a lot of pollinators and they must be, should be pollinated really fast. See, there, there are a lot of epidendum, fra uh, pro prostecaea, fragrance. A lot of them, branches, and you can see the moss. It's covered with moss. The trees are fully covered with this prostechia uh, fragrance. And also with tilantias. <coughs> see, the Eldorado, some Brassavola here, Martiana, and prostecheas, tilantias, everything. It's and see the, how thick the moss is. So even with the humidity, this moss retains a lot of water inside. See how it's a very lush, we call lush, lush vegetation. Every, see, to get to, get to this place, we, we, we were in, in the Amazon last year, last January. And we planned to take photos of the El Dorado. And when we got to the place, we only, we only saw seedlings. And the locals told us that some guys stopped uh, and loaded a pickup truck with the larger plants. So we, we spent three days there, and we didn't see any plant in bloom. So and this, this year, we decided to go back again. And then we have this friend there who knows another guy, who knows another guy, who is a hunter. He's not a professional hunter. He just hunts to, as a complement for his, the food he buys on the market. And this guy walks a lot around. So he found another area, which is this area I'm showing the photos. These were taken in January, which is 
pristine area. Nobody ever, only hunter and animals had been there. And when I go to these places, I always ask our guide, what, are, what is the most dangerous thing here? And he said, oh, there are wild boars, jaguars, uh, but the most thing, diff, uh, dangerous would be a snake, but they're not common here. Uh, so you can walk rather, you don't have to worry a lot. But uh, he, he also told us that six months before we were, we were there, one lady was killed by a jaguar, okay? <laughs> So you see most of the plants light colors and they are also falling because of the low light. When we go in this place, uh, right where we exit the, the paved road, there is a big tree with the Eldorado Alba. I didn't take the photo, it was raining, but that plant has about, had about 10 to 12 to 15 flowers. Uh, very high up in the trees, which is very unusual. Look at the leaves of the plant. They are in low light and covered with lichens. See? You, you barely can see the leaf. So <laughs> I don't know how they can take it. From this, you can imagine how humid this place is. It's not as hot as here, but very uncomfortable, very humid. Many plants see also a concolor variety in very thick, very thin branches. This is about the darkest you, you could see commonly, okay? Another one, this plant is, is hanging. It's going to fall at any time. Things decay really fast in that area. And this, is, this was also an interesting plant we found. Uh, I got the pollen of this plant. Uh -huh. So I already pollinated it with, with something else. And many, many plants fall in the, on the ground, and they keep growing there for maybe years. You don't see big plants there because the back bulbs decay really fast. So you, don't, you only see smaller. You don't see big like those mosses we saw this morning. You don't see anything that comes close to that. And you see a lot of plants growing on the ground, see, and even blooming. A lot of organic material. See another one. The, the branch fell, and the, this plant is going to keep growing there. You see mushrooms. It's very inter interesting. It's another plant. You can see it's all <coughs> chewed by, by insects. And they're very, it's not, a organized, not an organized plant. It falls to the sides. It's, it's irregular, very irregular in growth. <coughs> this is a concolor and a regular type plant, and it's <coughs> almost in the same branch. And, and it's very difficult to take a photo because there is a lot of vegetation. So I, I cannot just go back and take a panorama view. It's very hard to do this. When you are in the open, it's much easier. See how they grow. You also find encyclia. And, and what, I, what I mean with this, uh, there are different campinas. And although you, you could find Eldorado in most of them, you find diff different orchid species other than Eldorado in them. So you may find Encyclia in one of the campinas, and you don't find it on the other one. 
you may find Rodriguezia, Rodriguezia in one of the Campinas, but on the other one, you don't find them. So it's actually, there are microclimates on these places. The, the Encyclia Tarumana, they are only on the ground. And in, you see some, see they are blooming here. And in some places you can't walk without stepping on them. There is a lot of Encyclias. You also find Bifrenaria, small ones. This is Rudolfi, Rudolfii. We managed to make seeds out of these plants, I think, out, out of this plant. Scuticara stili, I never saw one in bloom, but they are also near the ground in this area. Low down. Huh? They're low down. Yeah. But I, I, I haven't seen much of them, mo, mo, many of them. It's amazing they would be low down with that leaf growth. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I think they also grow on the top because I, I've seen photos. Yeah, yeah. But this one, and I was, I was also amazed uh, they don't grow in this place. I always thought Encyclia randii was from sunny and, and uh, conditions, but they grow like this, also always near the ground. But that's another place. Many small orchids you see there. And you see the bark, it's very good bark. What was that, is that Leptodes? Is that no, not Leptodes, I don't know the name of it. Not Leptodes. <laughs> and here you see the Rodriguezia, see? The, the Secunda, red, red, Rodriguezia, here red. And the branches falling apart, the, the, the layer of, of, of moss is falling. You see a lot of falling, falling things, and a lot of Rodriguezia. And there is another Rodriguezia, which is, a, I think, a new species. I never saw it in habitat. I got this with a friend. We have one plant. We never managed to pollinate it. Sorry, it's not a Cattleya. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's also nice. And this is a new species that from one of, from some Campina there. You can also find Anodis, which was a Epidendrum in the past. I, know if, I don't know if this is this color or Schlechterianum. The Prostachea fragrance in close up. And you also see vanilla. This is one big, huge, like a 12-foot vanilla <coughs> nearby. So from what I showed you, uh, the ideal is to get warm, <coughs> is that you provide warm temperatures all year long. You can go below 64, 60, 60 maybe 60 degrees. But the lower you get, uh, the worse for the plant. So you can't go for short periods, no problem. But the ideal, if you really want to grow them good, is around 64 minimum. Uh, they, they, need, they can get good light, good light, you can grow them with all the other cattleyas. You can grow with the trianis, with the mossy, no problem at all, they can take it. Uh, but always high humidity, always. And uh, you can mount them. If you live in Florida, you can mount them. Is it working? No. If you, if you live in California, that would be, I think, another story. You would probably better pot them because it's much drier out there. So you, you need to avoid plants to dry out completely except for short periods, uh, if they are not growing, if they are not sending a new growth. And you can fertilize them the same way as you do for all the other cattleyas. They don't have a very big resting period. Uh, we like to use clay pots, although we, although we have some plants in plastic pots. Clay pots breathe better and the media doesn't decay as fast as in a plastic pot. Uh, 
you, you should provide a very well aerated media, should provide air inside. And uh, we like to hang the plants. And as Keith Davis used, we, all, we plant all our, our plants using this wire. We never use a, a st stick uh, here, never. And this is, this is tree fern, but you can use bark as well and, and the other regular media for Cattleya that you have. The only thing you, ke you have to keep wa an eye for the, uh, this media, since you are going to keep them moist at all the times, the potting media will decay faster than for if compared to the other plants. So you need to be aware of that. And then for, for those of you who grow violacea, the conditions, the climate conditions for Cattleya violacea are exactly the same as for Cattleya eldorado, except that Cattleya violacea doesn't like the roots to be soaked all the time. They like to have free roots, so they like to be mounted or on a basket. That's the only difference. Eldorado can pot, violacea you should mount. That's the only difference. Well, these are typical, uh, well, this thing is not working. It's going on and off. The first photos are from typical colors that you would see in nature. Um, most of these photos were taken in our greenhouse or in the greenhouse of our fland, friend and some in habitat. So this would be a typical color form, very light. Uh, the flower, they have usually three flowers, two to three flowers. And uh, one strong plant we have had four flowers. Uh, it's been reported six flowers. I never saw a plant with six flowers. Uh, our, our strong plants, they produce mostly four flowers. And the flowers can get to four and three quarters inch of the diameter from smaller and up to six inches in diameter. They can get really big. And darker colors, as I told you, is very rare. And usually uh, lighter colors and concolors, concolor form is quite common in habitat. <coughs> so here you can see uh, the flowers, they easily get brown spots. They easily decay in nature. Uh, they, have, they have not a very good consistency. So I don't know how these plants uh, will go uh, as, as high in, a, in a hybrid, how they will turn over if used for hybridization. As far as I, as I know, they were not used in, in hybridization, maybe in a few cases, okay? <coughs> the good thing about them is the lip, the, the yellow, strong yellow inside the lip. And there, there couldn't be a better name for this species than Eldo, Catlé Eldorado, which is the gold. Eldorado is the search for gold. The, the Spanish went deeply inside the Amazon to search for the gold. And so this plant is inside the Amazon, and it's got a golden lip. So the name is perfect. And I hear that the name is not valid. The name Cattleya Wallisi is the valid one. So Valicia. this is Wallisi, yeah. So it's too bad. Uh, Eldorado <laughs> is much nicer. <laughs> I will keep Eldorado. Yeah, Eldorado always. So uh, this is another light color form. Uh, the shape is usually like this. We don't see a lot of good plants. Another one. This is typical what you would see in habitat. See? Yes. We're gonna get there. 
this is, I, I, I can't see very well. I think it's another, it's a concolor, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah, see how, how yellow is the lip? <coughs> see a concolor? Yeah, Wallisia. See, this plant does not have a very good shape. It's terrible. But the lip has a very big yellow in it. See, some plants have very intense <coughs> uh, golden lip. This is the concolor variety, which is quite common. Yeah, very nice. This plant is this plant bloomed this year for us. It's like this high, like 15 centimeters high. And this is the first blooming concolor from our seeds. Uh, we did some, a lot of crossings with Eldorado, but all the plants are turning out, are blooming with light colors. We still didn't get dark colors from the crossings. And uh, even if you cross, if you self-pollinate an alba, concolor plants will come out of it. So the concolor is really something inside the genetics of this, of this plant. And now I'm starting to cross other plants, doing some more radical terms in, uh, crosses in terms of color to try to achieve darker colors. See another concolor with a much better shape. So I'm doing a new, I'm starting a new generation of Cattleya Eldorado with, with darker uh, color forms. Alex, how many generations have you started? Oh, I'm starting the second one only. Yeah, it's recent. It's quite recent. And uh, this friend, he sent us uh, maybe four, three years ago, he sent us a lot of seed pods from his plants the one that rented out the camper, the hot, mm -hmm. the car. And I'm, I have maybe 3,000 plants from his, his crosses. And he sent Violacea and Eldorado. But the Violacea, many of them turned out to be hybrids. Mm -hmm. So I, but he's a good guy, he's a friend. Mm -hmm. And, but the Eldorados are confirming Eldorados. But I'm waiting for them to bloom and check if I can get any good plant out of those crosses or if, if I would throw everything away because I don't have space for all those plants. But it's, it was a good opportunity. We accepted the seed pods because it was a good opportunity to get new, new material that we don't have. It's difficult to get this plant. This one I consider to be one of the nicest uh, type plants that we have. And it actually came from the south of Brazil, completely on the opposite part of the country, from a guy who grew purpuratas and intermediates. He, did, he, he quit, he, he retired, and he man we managed to get this plant from him. So it's one of the best uh, type plants that we have. This is the Alba which is also a common variety to get. See, another alba, it's very beautiful because the lip is it's got a big yellow marking on it. Another alba. And this is a photo of a photo. Instead of the yellow, this plant has a green marking on the lip, okay? And uh, we supposedly have this plant. It never bloomed. It's very sm still small, and it's really, really, really hard to grow. So it, it's going slowly and slowly. It's, we, we take care like, like a small baby, but <laughs> I hope it will bloom like this someday. I, I, hope the, I hope that the plant confirms this color because it's really rare. I've never seen it, and I hope it, we manage to bloom it Maybe and see it. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. See, uh, you have to be careful because when you grow here, or for example in California or other states, 
the environment is not proper for fungus. So you can be more aggressive inside your greenhouse. But when you grow in Brazil, there are fungus and bacteria everywhere. So you have to take a lot, you have to be a lot more careful when you're growing plants there. Otherwise you lose them just like that. This is also one of our crosses. It was first bloom on a very small plant. Uh, it's, it's a small splash petals and sepals. I like it because it's not only the petals and the, it's the sepals with the light pink. This is a more heavily splashed petals. Uh, it looks like the ones from Bella Vista orchids. Uh, in Brazil, we are uh, trying to make crosses of, of Eldorado and also I think the only one who is also crossing Eldorado is uh, Antonio Schmidt from Bella Vista. I don't, re I don't recall any other that is working with this species. See another semi-alba splashed. They are beautiful. This is, uh, uh, I think it's easier to find semi-alba splash than semi-alba without a splash. Pure semi-alba. See, only with a, a small area. Very nice plant. And if you, if you have the good, just as an example, if you have the good uh, climate condition, you can grow them very easy. Uh, we visited a guy in Manaus, and he had a concrete wall, but with rugged, not, not very smooth, and he just put a nail on the wall and attached the Eldorado. And the plant was sending roots everywhere and blooming on the concrete wall, on the side of, sides of, uh, side of his greenhouse. This is the cerulea form. Uh, Francisco Miranda and Kleber uh, Lacerda, which is also one guy that studied a lot, and they both live in the Amazon area. They never saw a cerulea, and they always said that such variety didn't exist. And this plant came from the same source as that other good plant from southern Brazil, from a Lelia purpurata grower. So I don't know where this guy got this plant. And uh, this is extremely rare variety. I think one of the, I think the rarest variety in, in, in Lelia, in Catlea Dorado. And we made a seed, a self-pollination out of this plant. And the, the seedlings, they are really hard to grow. And one of them turned out to be really dark. This one, I called it midnight. Okay, see it's really dark. This is first blooming. So maybe we will get, uh, now I, I'm trying to cross this plant. Since we only, have, we only had one plant, I'm trying to cross this plant with the original plant. Or maybe make a, make a sibling cross. So this would be an extremely dark cerulea, very rare. <coughs> this plant, I took the photo from a phone cell, cell phone. This is from a friend in Manaus, and uh, we also got a division. I still didn't bloom, but this is the most perfect Eldorado I've seen. So I, I thought it would be good to show you this photo. Huh? See, this is perfect. I hope I can bloom this plant soon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> beautiful. Now some extremely dark fo color forms I'm going to show you. Uh, this is not normal at all. Uh, maybe 10 years ago, we had a, a Japanese visitor coming to our place, and he showed us a photo of an Eldorado, and a very good plant. And well, where, where did you get this plant? And he told that, oh, we, I got it in Sao Paulo State from a grower. You should go there. He's selling those plants. And we called this guy, and he only had 10 plants left in really, really bad shape. And we bought those plants. This guy was a very serious grower. So, and the following plants, I think most of them came from this, they are siblings from this guy. 
Not, th not this one, okay? This is also a very dark form in the petals. It's like a flamea, but the sepals are very light and the petals dark, so it makes a really big, really nice contrast. This is another one, another of the seedlings. So they have very strong lip. Usually they have a marking here. This one is very, it changes right from yellow to purple. Very interesting. This plant, I, I, I don't have this plant. We got the pollen of it. It was from our friend in Manaus. The plant was very dehydrated, very weak. He, he moved from one house to another. So he was changing the plants. The plants were, he was not taking well care of them. But it, it was really, really, it has really, really strong markings on the petals. Very nice plant. So he, he gave me some pollen of it, of it, and I already used it in some, some of our plants. This, is, I, this, I think, is one of the nicest Eldorados we have. It's a sibling cross, the same sibling cross from Sao Paulo. And this is how we got them a couple of years ago. See, it's a really strong plant, good grower, and it's amazing. The blooming was amazing. This was the best blooming. And uh, then this year we had one first bloomer, which is this one. I think this is the most amazing Eldorado we have. It's so intense, I cannot capture this well on photograph. It's like a rubra. You can see it if you put like 200 Eldorados, you will see this plant right away. It's very, very dark, deep, uh, deep purple uh, petals. Very nice. I tried to self-pollinate it, but the seed pod didn't go on. But I crossed this with another dark color form. So let's see. So that's why I told you this is my second uh, generation of crossings. So I hope I can get uh, darker plants in the future, which up to now I couldn't, okay? And oh, that was it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the.